Welcome to Coffee Power. This episode is going to be 100% in English and we are going to talk about inner source. And we bring Conway Chung, which is the best one on this inner source thing. You are going to know now what, what is going to be that inner source. But imagine how can we promote reusability and how we can promote this kind of open source mindset, but inside of one company, one organization. If you prefer to watch this episode in Spanish, it's available in our channel. Let me say that in Spanish. Si prefieres ver este episodio en español, lo tenemos en el canal de YouTube, así que te puedes ir al canal y puedes buscar este episodio de Inner Source en español. Lo tenemos disponible para ti. Bienvenidos a Coffee Power. Soy Osvaldo Álvarez, un emprendedor y líder de equipos de desarrollo de software. Semanalmente conversaremos con un experto del mundo digital para que tengas más herramientas que te ayuden a alcanzar el éxito en esta era de la transformación tecnológica. Gracias por acompañarme el día de hoy y con café en mano, aquí comienza tu podcast, Coffee Power. Welcome to the Coffee Power English version, Conway. How are you, man? I'm good. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Now you're going to be the most famous guy in the Spanish-speaking community. I guess so. <laughs> I, I, are you ready for that? I, I, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> so why Conway? Mm -hmm. Conway is a veteran of Expedia here in Canada. And, and work in Latin America as well. More than 10 years of software development experience from the ASP.NET war to React. So that's a long time, man. Oh, yes. .NET people, they have created uh, very good things, actually. You know, they're creating .NET core and different yep. new technology. A Pretty super awesome. life back in the days. Exactly. <laughs> And he's a software architect and he's the inner source lead for Scotia Bank. So nobody better than him to talk about inner source here in Coffee Power. So Conway, what is inner source? Trying to explain to us and to everybody that is hearing about inner source, well, they know nothing about this. What is that? Yeah, so Inosaur is a basically a open source concept that brings in, into corporate world that uh, we use it in enterprise, we use it in small company, medium company, you name it. Um, but uh, there's a tons of different ways to do this. Uh, some people, you know, start from grassroots, some people start from the top. So there's tons of different ways to do so. So basically is bringing the open source inside of the company, inside of the organization, taking all the principles and make it work. Inside, it's not open, right? It's inner. Source. It's inner. It's exactly. very controlled, like, yeah, in some sense. So and what's the benefits for a company to start doing inner source? I would say it's the culture itself. So if your company thinking of I want to nurture a community that is uh, innovative, that they listen to the qualities and then they want to do something great that potentially shareable uh, across the whole world, then that is the benefit the company, if the, that's the benefit the company looking for and that's in the source for them. Okay. So I, I was reading one article, you know, to, to bring you the right question. And I was reading that inner source is not a strategy. It's a movement. Are you agree with this? I 100% agreed. Because what, what is a strategy? Strategy is a way of doing things, right? We strategize like, okay, we'll do things this way first, this way next, and then we do the thing. And that will comes up to a whole plan. And that's not just that, because a movement involves uh, emotion. You have to believe in something to bring up your emotion that I think, oh, I think doing these things, this small project or a big project, it will benefit everyone and it will make the world much better. So this is the belief that you have to be in in order to do in the source. That's why it's a movement. 
Yeah, that sounds like uh, if you are creating a strategy, maybe some kind of manager that is creating this mm -hmm. and then they have to roll out to other organization, maybe top down and, and, and not like uh, what you say, like a creating this Absolutely. movement, like organically, like uh, with people, like, a, you know, making people feel this and, and start like a contag contagiate uh, and other people with the same uh, uh, believe I, I would say right mm -hmm. yeah so it, it's not like a start with a small number of people it has to be a bigger group of a more like a majority belief in a yeah. in a company to make it work otherwise if it is a small group maybe just one discipline maybe just engineering is doing so it's not going to work with inner source because within a organizations uh, there are three main group of people in the agile world that will be business like the product owner we have designer on the side and we have engineering actually doing the work doing the coding to make that happen that free group of people has to align with this belief otherwise uh, it will not success because yeah. product owner will not give you the time designer is like oh I just want to do this you know yeah. and engineering like uh, in order to do that, I have to mm, I have to do this first, do this first, and modulize this and the concepts, other stuff. So, uh, yeah, so it needs to be like everyone to be aligned, almost uh, to the same belief, and it's it's like a core value of the organization. So, if I am in an organization right now, and let's say that. I want to start this movement. So who is the right person to start this? Um, well, I, I think like to, as an MVP, it will start organically. So there's multiple phases if uh, enterprise or a company want to adopt that. It will be start with a small, uh, small number of people, a group, that they want to create something that is shareable. That's the first step. It's just like the open source, right? Like the open source world is one uh, a one person bootstrapping, or they have uh, multi people they group together and do something bigger. So it's the same concept. But when it grows more and more, and uh, upper level or leadership see the value of sharing, then it's a different question because. At that point, you have to uh, adopt the thinking as well as you basically has to start from the top. Because it's about empowerment within the, uh, in the organizations. Without the empowerment to say from the culture, from the value of the organizations or from the leadership and say, hey, this is the way that you should do. I will give you time to do so and find a way that to do so. Otherwise, if they don't give all that to have a right environment, it won't happen. Yeah, so th that's the other, que the other question that I wanna make you. Uh, time, doing things with the inner source mindset, uh, as you say, with that reusability minds mindset at the beginning, maybe at the beginning you are spending more time to create everything to be reusable instead of, you know, creating something tied to your product or whatever. So um, my question is, in some cases, you're gonna spend more time. So how do you sell this to the business that you wanna create the reusability and you wanna spend more time and maybe more money and they have to invest on this? How do you sell this to the, to the business? Uh. If I have to sell this, it uh, has to be sell to all the benefits of uh, that comes out with uh, open source, uh, like uh, faster developments, like uh, what you can uh, have a more complete documentations, no matter it's active documentations or passive. Yeah. When we're talking about like documentations, we normally think of, oh, crap, like we're reading a PDF, a, a, a few web pages that all the details documentation. It's not just that. 
because a lot of uh, when we're doing developments, we have processes. And sometimes processes are not necessarily just on paper itself. It can be lived within uh, chat rooms, Slack, Teams, and comments, maybe if you're using Confluence, uh, those are passive uh, uh, documentation as well. Yeah. So those are the benefits uh, that you will uh, incur uh, when, when you're doing in a source. And uh, the other thing like I would say like is, uh, again, I would say, say sell the culture of, of that because in a source model, encourage uh, collaborations. So collaborations, not just within one team, it will be multiple teams here and there, there, their developers somehow interconnected and then they do something great. So that will break the silo. Sometimes like when you're in a big organization, you do things in a very small piece yeah. of the puzzles and Developers generally don't like that. They <laughs> like, like, oh crap, like I'm just doing API for my whole life and then I just do it again and again and again and again and hook up to different systems is boring. But with Inosource, they have a chance to do something else. It breaks the silo. It nurtures the innovations to happen. So I, I think that's the biggest selling point if you want uh, not a quick job of finishing one project. If you want to build a community, become a technology a company that is uh, needed. In fact, like uh, the biggest software company in the world, Microsoft, Google, uh, GitHub, and everyone is actually doing in a source. They oh, are yeah. not not doing like centralized team and doing. Uh, I, 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 I'm like back in old days in Microsoft, like, oh, I just doing Windows. Yeah. It's not anymore. Like Microsoft is one of the biggest contributors these days in open source community. Like uh, VS Code is open source and you can do plugins, whatever you like, however you like, and, and, and you yeah. can contribute code. Exactly. And, like, yeah. Like, you can set up PR now, part. actually, if you want. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the fun part. That, that, that's one of the questions that I have here in my list. So what are the companies that are doing inner source uh, uh, in, now? I would say like um, a technology company definitely is one of the first uh, batch of the companies doing so. Uh, quickly follow up uh, of the enterprise uh, world, in the enterprise world, uh, the banking, the financials uh, start doing that. Uh, one of them uh, started earlier, I would say, is uh, like, what's the name of that? Capital One? Exactly. Thank you. With a one. So they are one of the pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell my slide is harder. <laughs> <laughs> To be super honest, like, yeah, uh, yeah like I, I think uh, Capital One is one of the first one that adopts yeah. that uh, inner source uh, culture into the corporate world to do developments, open APIs, and a lot of good stuff that they have uh, come up with. Let's do inner source. Let's do, and why not open source, right? I think inner source is almost the first step. Then, if you have something that you want to share with the world, why not open source? And you yep. can have like a different layers, right? Absolutely. Because like uh, one of the theory is that um, for enterprise, if you cannot do inner source well, you cannot do open source. Oh, that's, that's exactly. Right? So if you, if you I, cannot control your house, you cannot control <laughs> the neighborhood. So that's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so do the inner house first, do the inner source first, have it under control, meet all the criteria, security, whatever red tape you have to put in, and make it work before you're publishing. It, it is not like the open source world, that's why it becomes inner source, it's more controlled, yeah. it's more protective in some sense to, to the company, to the enterprise itself. Uh, and then once they feel comfortable with this step and then they are more ready 
for like a open source project, for example, in the future, me future, maybe next year or so, or in two years time, we'll see open API within financial across uh, financial institute. We'll that's, see that very soon. Would be awesome, man. That, that's, that's, that's a dream come true. So Conway, <clears throat> I gotta, I gotta tell you one situation that um, happened a lot of time in, in my life. So in my case, f forget about a big company. Imagine a small company when you have three teams in the company. And sometimes in that small company with those three teams, they are duplicating things. Mm -hmm. And they don't talk enough to share software and share code in a proper way. So... Yep. Imagine this in a huge organization with, I don't know, 10,000 employees or more. Oh, yeah. How, how, <laughs> how, how, how can we prevent of that happening? So if you have a small team and you want to do inner source, maybe it's easier than a big company. And you were telling me, this has to start with a movement, but if, if better would be better if that is done from leaders or would be better if that is start from the same people in those teams? So the challenge is that uh, if it depends on the company itself, if the original culture uh, or the original leader, I, I, I would imagine like uh, some new leaders come into the, to the company and say, well, the way that you do software sucks <laughs> and, and then I want to change. So I would imagine like this will be the moment. Um, yeah, so like it, it depends on if your team is ready. That's why like if you starting right from the top and push it down, people don't feel they own it. So I, I know it sounds like, okay, oh, uh, if eventually inner source need to push from top down, why we start from there? The, the challenge is the team is not ready. They are not educated enough. They don't feel the needs and they feel like, oh, it's just another thing that my boss asked me to do. Yeah. Oh, so I, now I need to take extra time and, you know, uh, it's not organic, share some code. Exactly. It's not organic. Like, it's like, I, I have to do extra work for yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now, I have another assignment. Yes. You're yes, right, exactly. Right. So, but imagine a, a when you're working with people in technology, I think, and, and I will say this forever, we, the developers people, we have a syndrome. And our syndrome is that we don't trust in, codes, in code created by another, by another one, another person. Mm -hmm. So if you are bringing me, or if you are sending me a PR in my central repository, my initial reaction is i don't trust in your code i don't believe in your code so we have this kind of syndrome how can we break that mm -hmm. so i think it, it is related to mindset like in here because your mind is telling you oh something from external coming in ah that we just yeah. x like no like because that's a natural uh, human response to external subjects that are coming in, right? But if your mindset is more open to say, well, I, I would not know everything in the world. I probably don't do the best way. And some people probably is better than me. Yeah. It's not about me anymore. Like if, if you're still thinking of me, 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 and then it's like, okay, of course you are, a very close person you think you do the best thing and yeah. then other people sucks and like all that so your mind is is is, <laughs> is breaking breaking the way to to improve yourself because like exactly. you have to learn it harder you have to fail hard in order to learn that instead of like other people okay maybe i open my mind and then I try some other people's uh, methodologies, ways of doing things might be better. If you don't open that up, you, you will just learn it hard ways. Yeah, that's a controlled mindset for sure. Yes. And that's, and that's a problem because I think a lot of companies, 
has that control mindset. And the problem with this, if you start creating teams that own things and you have one team that own different piece of software and you have another team that owns different things. And then when you need to create another team and though that, that team needs something from the other teams, you start creating bottlenecks and dependency. Mm. Yep. And one team is telling you, no, I don't have time for you. I'm going to put your thing in the bottom of my backlog and you need to wait two months until I release what you need. So inner source is a solution for that because basically you are open your code base and you are letting them. So come here, send me your PR. I can review your PR and basically what you need, if you need something, you do it. I don't, you don't have to depend on a centralized dependency. Exactly. But this, that's huge, man. How do you, I think the most of the company, they have this centralized and, 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 and control and ownership mindset. It's huge. So, so this inner resource model can help a lot of company, but at the same time, I, I will say it's super hard to make it happen. It's super hard. It takes years of building. It, it will not happen overnight like this. Like, because why I said that, like, eventually you have to from, from the top down because it's a mindset, it's a culture change that you have to put in people's mind. For example, security team. Like if your security team think, oh, I need to be super rigid, super hardcore, must be secure, not anything coming in new, yeah. no good. Yeah. Then you cannot in innovate. Be that's why you need to plant that mindset into people's mind and say, hey, we become an inner source company, a lot of new things coming in, different ways of doing things. Exactly. And then those security people will not be so narrow sighted and yes. say, ah, okay, maybe I have to look more on the other side. Uh, oh, people is doing things like this outside. Yeah. And it's still secure. Yeah. So Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So... Like uh, that, that's why like the, 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 the culture, the mindset, you have to plan in people, it's a movement. That's why it's all in here. Can't wait. And I will say, do not over, over simplify things because mm. people, sometimes not technical people believe that if you want to reuse and share software, it's kind of a copy paste. It's like a puzzle, right? Oh and, yeah. And it's not, you know that it's not. And, 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 and at the same time, you have to influence a lot to your business people to, you know, make them understand the complexity of doing this as well. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Copy and use code is like so like 80s, 90s kind of concept, like when the world is not that open. Now the world is all interconnected, it's open source world many yeah. times. And you have to evolve as a organization how you adapt to that. Yeah. So can we, I have other questions. So imagine that you are creating a software right now, mm -hmm. right? And you have a finished version uh, of your software. And then um, the company want, you know, another team basically to reuse what you create. But you didn't plan that development to be reusable. To, to, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, you plan for the spec that you have at that time, and basically you deliver the software to your, uh, uh, to your market, to your spec, to whatever you, you have right now. So my question is, what's the best way? Plan every software to be reusable since day one, or after having a software ready, then spending time to make all the tweaks and, and fix all the technical depths to make it reusable. What would be your approach? Oh, that will be a tough one. So <laughs> <laughs> why I say that is because we are in an agile world. So agile many times tell us that like we iterate, right? We do whatever we need to hit the MVP and we iterate. But in the back of our mind, when we architect something, we don't necessarily have to build out the whole thing to be at, like reusable. We just need to uh, leave a doorway, maybe, a, not back door, <laughs> doorway. <laughs> <laughs> it's done, done, yeah, don't do it. Yeah, 
exactly. Don't no back door, uh, <laughs> a doorway for other people to uh, to use uh, the piece of software that you're going yeah. to create. So just leave it open a little bit, and uh, and when the time comes and uh, other teams come on board and say, "Hey, your software is amazing. I want to adopt that," and then. And then that, that's the time that you spend more time on say, oh, okay, that's great. I, I actually planned it for this. There is the small door here, open yeah. it, and then you can use it. Okay. So that's the approach I think I will use uh, if I have a, a piece of software is, you know, I starting a piece of software right now. Great, man, great advice. And, and last but not least, If somebody that is watching you here in YouTube or listening to you in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, any platform when we have coffee power and coffee power, coffee power, <laughs> coffee power with Conway Chen. This is our first episode in English. So I am us, you know, we have a song in Spanish and Mark Anthony say, como dice Celia, Celia Cruz is a, is a singer from Cuba. Uh -huh. My English It's not very good looking. That's a very that's a that's a very good one. So please, people, I'm sorry. So, but somebody want to start the inner source now. I hear Conway. Conway is my my god now. I want to be like Conway in the future. You know, I want to have your haircut. You know, everything. <laughs> What steps should I follow? Mm -hmm. What documentation, website, videos? How can I ramp up to inner source? What is my first step? What is your recommendation? What do you have to do? Mm -hmm. So um, it depends on the exposure of uh, you into the open source world. If you are more exposed, that's great because you already have the first step. If not, look at some other projects, how they do things and understand the open source world. And there is a lot of resources, for example, inner source common, If you want to start in the source, they have the full explanation benefit. If you need to convince your boss to do so, give you time. Uh, maybe like Google, like Google, they give uh, like 30% of their employees time, extra time, to work on their own pet project. Yeah. Back in the days, like that's amazing. Not every company has the luxury to do so. They many times on the deadline, you have to do it now, 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 yeah. now, now, right? <laughs> so it's, it's not that easy. But... To start an inner source project is just like an open source project. You can bootstrap it yourself, just start it yourself, and tell other people, share it to other people and say, hey, I have this library. It's very simple to use, simple library, but save you, well, two weeks of time of development. Oh, wow, that's great. Now I can start using it. So yeah. today, you can do that right now start a project think of the project that is shareable and share that's it that's that's the first step of inner source it's, it's otherwise like a, it was yeah it's so simple <laughs> it's a movement any book any book conway any documentation that you recommend people to to read to follow uh i i will look at uh, inner source common dot org i will look at apache apache apparently doing in Uh, like open source for 20 years plus. And they have a, a, the Apache way uh, page that is a great way to learn uh, how they do open source and inner source projects. Um, and uh, O'Reilly, uh, I think they do have a, uh, uh, a few inner source book. Uh, it is actually also in the inner source common uh, as well uh, that, you can view and you can start and there is even i think a free, free version of a handbook that you can download in the pdf read that briefly they have few steps that you can follow and then just start that use github <laughs> that's the easiest way <laughs> great man great. conway yeah. thank you very much for being coffee power you are welcome and thank you to have me no man this episode was amazing so bye-bye bye-bye